How's everybody doing today? And as you can see, we're going to be rebuilding the San Diego Padres, a team that has a phenomenal farm system and also some really good youth talent. But before we talk about this team any further, then we get into this rebuild. Make sure you hit that like button down below. Subscribe if you are new and enjoyed the content. And let me know in the comment section below what teams you guys would like me to rebuild in the future. In the last rebuild, I messed up on the editing, guys. I've been really focused on bringing you guys wins, uh, like World Series and stuff like that. So that's kind of why I did what I did. Um, but you guys have made it really apparent that you guys want me to just focus on building the best team possible, letting players develop, and just, just finding a way to make the team the best team possible, not necessarily focus on wins. So that's what we're going to do now. We're just going to focus on building, you know, whatever we can get. You know, can we make a really, really good team? And if we don't make the playoffs in any of the three seasons, we don't make the playoffs in any of the three seasons. If we don't win a World Series in any of the three seasons, we don't do that. Um, it's all about building the best possible team. So let's quickly look at the squad, see where we're standing um, and what, where some changes need to be made. So right away, I know Tyson Ross isn't with the club anymore, so he'll have to be traded just because one, he's 30 and he's not going to get much better. And two, I just don't really want to keep him around. But we have Lu Lucchesi, who's actually been doing a pretty good in real life this season. We have Denilson Lamette. Clayton Richards, a, uh, a name that I'll be looking to move. We have Luis Perdomo. Jordan Lyles is okay. But um, Eric Lauer, Chris Paddock looks decent. So these two I'm really going to let develop. Um, Perdomo, I'm going to hope he develops quite nicely, which he, I think he does. Um, Adrian Morejon or Morejon, he, he looks like he's going to be a good prospect. He's got a potential um, along with Mackenzie Gore and um, Cal Quantrill, Logan Allen, we, Michael Baez. We have some really good pitching prospects in the starting um, pitching spot. So we're looking really good for the future there. Relief pitching, Carter Capps, um, Robbie Erline, and Matt Strom. They develop okay, but they're not too amazing. Um, we have Phil Matten down here but outside of that bullpen is going to be an area we need to improve on especially since kirby yates is our closer and he's not that good either uh catching wise francisco mejia and austin hedges phenomenal catchers aj ellis will be a name that i'm looking to move and then whoever is the better of the two catchers that's who i'm going to keep and the other one's probably going to be moved just because they're they're going to be some good trade pieces to use for the future first base we got eric hosmer locked up for a really good for a very long time probably when he hits 30 i'll look to trade him just because he'll still have some value um but if he performs well i'll keep him it's one of those things if he's if he's declining and not getting any better i'll probably get rid of him but if he's still contributing to the squad i'll keep him around um jose perella it's if he does well i'll keep him if not we have a lot of youth players in the shortstop and second base position that definitely could take over the role. So I'm okay with letting him go if we have some players that are um, developing quickly. Um, we have Corey Spangenberg, who I probably won't keep around. Alan Cordoba and Luis Arias. Luis Arias looks to be a phenomenal talent for the future. Um, Char uh, Charlie Christian Villanueva will be our third baseman for the future. Um, he develops quite nicely. We also have Carlos Asuaje who I'm cool with keeping around as well. Kind of like that platoon infielder. Freddie Galvis, a player that if he plays well, I'll keep him. If not, we have Fernando Tatis Jr., who definitely will be a future star for us. Franchi Cordero develops decently, so I don't see any problems uh, keeping him around. Travis Jankowski is one of those players who hits the mid-70s, so he's not a bad player to keep around for the platoon outfield spot. We have Manuel Margot in center, who's not going to be going anywhere, and also Will Myers, who turns into a pretty good outfielder for the future. Hunter Renfro is kind of like a good bench bat as well, so between him and Jankowski, I think we're pretty good for that platoon outfielder. Fran Mil Reyes has a lot of hype around him in real life, a really big power bat. Um, he only has C potential here, but... In real life, I know he's a little bit more hyped up. So overall, I think for the future, we're set with this squad. We have, you know, we have Tatis, we have Mejia, we have really good pitching prospects. Um, so I think we're pretty set. I want to make a couple pitch, a uh, couple pitchers, couple of trades with some pitchers, uh, mostly the aging pitchers. I'll probably bring in some more prospects because I don't see us making the playoffs season one. I think uh, season two will be a stretch as well. Season three is probably going to be our best shot. 
um, once we let all these players develop. So let me get into these trades and I'll show you guys what we do. First trade we're gonna be making is getting rid of those two aging starters that I was looking to move on from. Tyson Ross and Clayton Richard are out the door along with Tierso, Tierso Ornelas, 18 year old, 56 overall C potential. We're bringing in Kyle Muller of the Braves, the starting pitcher, 20 years old, B potential, 60 overall. Um, but the big pieces, or I wouldn't say the big pieces, but the main the main piece of this trade is Drew Waters, 19 years old, 61 overall, B potential, as well as um, William Contreras, 20 years old, B potential, 62 overall. We're just bringing in some more prospects, um, just kind of build that farm system a little bit more. I feel like that's kind of be our best way to get uh, players for the future in trades. So there's the first trade. All right, we're going to the Royals for this trade. We're getting rid of Matt Scherzer, AJ Ellis, as well as Phil Matten. Which, I mean, we're actually giving up a lot um, for this. Where is he? He's a relief pitcher. Phil Matten, B potential, 25 years old, 64 overall. Um, the aging AJ Ellis, as well as the aging Matt Scherzer, who's, I mean, he's only 28, but still. We're going for Suli Matias um, of the Dominican Republic from the Royals. He looks to be a phenomenal prospect for the future. He's 19, B potential, 63 overall. I mean, you can see he's got big trade value. So we're going to make that move. And actually, I think that's it for this year. Um, I know it leaves us a little weak in the pitching just because we're, we're down two spots now. Um, but we can bring up Denilson Lamette. So now we're only down one spot. And then from there, we could also bring up Perdomo. And then that's our starting rotation sorted. So let me let me get the lineup set and I'll show you guys what we're gonna do for season one. Season one, this is how we're gonna be lining up. I know we haven't made too many crazy trades, but I really want this one to be about building around the youth. And I feel like if we made too many trades that would bring in crazy names, it would kind of take away from that. With that being said, in free agency, I'll probably have to sign a couple players just because a lot of these players are on one year deals. And I don't look to bring a lot of them back. I really want to build um, the bullpen. But we'll talk about that once the offseason comes. So this is how we're lining up for the first season. Perella, Spangenberg, Hosmer, Myers, Villanueva, Cordero, Margot, and Galvis. Um, Spangenberg's a DH, so he obviously won't be hitting. Um, we have Mejia on the bench with Asuaje and Renf. This is how we'll line up for the um, starting rotation as well as the bullpen. Lamette, Lucchese, or Lucchese. Perdomo, Lyles, and Lauer. Erlin, Mitchell, Strom, Stamen, 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 Wick, Brewer, Caps, and Yates. I'm not expecting the pitching to go well at all. I'm expecting it to be really, really bad. Bro, and, and we've already talked about some of the farm system players. We have Urias, we have Tatis Jr. We have a lot of good names down there that I really want them to develop so they can start playing in the majors as well. So that's really it for the first season. I really want, just gonna sim to the draft day um, I'm expecting the season to go very very poorly the first two seasons I'm not expecting to make the playoffs I'm not even sure we'll make it the third season but we're really gonna try to let this team progress develop see how it goes and um, I'll catch you guys at draft day already we're at draft day and we have the seventh pick so let's see who we go with it sucks this was the guy I wanted this was the guy I was scouting because of his contact and his speed and his plate vision this is who i wanted and unfortunately he was taken a couple picks before us so let's see who we're gonna go with for this one we're gonna go thomas cope here right fielder out of canada based on his hitting stats um we'll just see where he is i'm i'm kind of thrown off because i was really banking on that one player making it through so everything's kind of thrown off right now we're gonna go lewis moya his stats just look really good we don't have him scouted but Based on his projected stats, he looks pretty decent. Round three, we'll give Miguel Escobar a chance. He looks pretty decent besides his walks and his control. So, so far, okay picks. I feel like we're gonna do okay, but I'm still a little unsure. We're gonna go Carmen Silva. I don't have him scouted, but his contact numbers look good. His fielding, his uh, plate vision, they just look really well-rounded. So for a third baseman, that looks it looks pretty good. Luis Silva is going to be the player that we're going with here. Again, just some really good projected stats. And we're going to be heading into the last round. So let's see who we go with here. We do have, what, 275 rated players left for potential. 
So, um, none of them look really good. Sometimes you can find a little diamond in the rough down here. So if I find one, I'll let you guys know. Actually, I might have just found him. Bill Baldwin. He says he's met his potential already. Um, the other one I was looking at was Paul Lugo, but we'll, we'll give Bill Baldwin a shot. Yeah, it was a it was a pretty lackluster draft. Um, the best one, Thomas Cope. I mean, his stats already look pretty decent. Um, 61 overall with 88 potential. We'll sign him up. Um, Miguel Escobar was the third round pick that he actually looks really good. His hits and case per nine are already really high. So he looks to be a, a player for the future. Everybody else was pretty pretty disappointing. I really thought Carmen Silva would have been a little bit better. His hitting stats are already pretty nice. Um, we'll sign up these guys for now, but we'll let the other two go. Luis Moya and Bill Baldwin. Unfortunately, it just wasn't a good draft. Um, so I will see you guys at the trade deadline. At the trade deadline day, we're sitting last in the West. Expected, it really is. 41 and 68 with 27 games behind. In the wild card, we're, we're not even in the picture. So we're 19 games out in the wild card. Looking at the rotation, Lamette is up to an 80 already. Um, 10 and 4 on the year, 4.13 ERA. <laughs> um, overall, I mean, not a horrible season. I mean, he, I mean, these pitchers, I'm not expecting too much. Um, you can see Luce, Lucchese, Lucchese, however you want to pronounce his name. His ERA is phenomenal. Um, but overall. I'm not expecting crazy numbers from these pitchers. I just want to see that they're developing because this first couple seasons are going to be pretty rough. And um, it's it's just going to be a season where I want to see development. I want to see that they're going up in rating and they're actually getting better. Um, Lamette and Luke Casey and Perdomo are those three that I'm really keeping my eye on. Lyles and Lauer are kind of just the fillers for now. Erlin is up to a 75, which is great to see. Um, 356 ERA, almost 100 innings, not too bad. Brian Mitchell, eh, I'm not really expecting much out of him. Matt Strom, he's a 70. Um, I wish he would be a little bit higher, but you know, it's not not too bad. Um, anybody else that I'm really interested in right here? Carter Caps, 74. He looks like he's kind of stalled out right now. And then Kirby Yates is Kirby Yates, you know. I mean, 26 saves. Has he blown too many? Four saves? Eh, nothing too crazy. Alrighty, let's look at the lineup. Manuel Margot has actually been hurt for uh, almost all of the first half. He broke his leg. That's probably why his potential's gone down. Um, he's not hitting that great. He is up to an 80 overall, but it's something we got to keep our eye on. Jose Perella is down to an 81. He's hitting 272 in the year. Eric Hosmer's potential's gone down, but his overall's gone up. He's hitting 229. Not what I want to see from a player that we're paying about 10 million to. Will Myers is an 84, which is phenomenal to see. You can see he's almost matched his home run um, stat from last year. 247, 343 on base. Uh, Christian Villanueva, 75. That's an okay number. Um, Frenchy Cordero, he's up to his 74. As long as he continues to progress, he should be a really good player for the future. Freddy Galvis is an 82. Um, he's at a 241, almost a 300 on base percentage. Uh, um, Austin Hedges, 78, 237 average. Mm, would like a little bit better. Corey Spangerberg's hitting uh, 200, 280. Ooh, Francisco Mejia. He might be taking over soon. Austin Hedges might be that... Uh, might be getting replaced. Mejia's looking like he's having a phenomenal year. Carlos Asuaje is a 70. He's hitting almost 300. And Hunter Renfro is just, he's not hitting the ball well at all. Um, but he's probably home run or miss. So, like I said, focusing purely on development. We'll see if we can find some more prospects to bring into the squad. Maybe a young player to kind of help out the team i'm not too sure for trades wise probably bullpen is where i'm going to be aiming to fill the or like change the most so if i can find a trade i'll show you guys if not i'll see you guys at the end of the season already at the deadline day and the one trade i'm looking to make is you're probably thinking why would i get rid of a starting player um he's got c potential he's 28 and we might as well get something for him before his contract runs out and it's gonna be freddie galvis and Esturi Ruiz, who's got C potential, I believe it is. He's one of our lowest rated players. We're going to be bringing in uh, K 
Kevin, Kevin, yeah, Kevin, Kevin, um, Kevin Biggio, 22 years old, B potential, 68 overall. He already looks pretty decent. Um, he can play all across the midfield, as well as a decent little bullpen arm in Joe Biagini, 27 years old, B potential, 78 overall. Um, small contracts as well so they'll be that's that'll be that'll help us for the future i think this is a really good move i think it really helps us um it gives us a bullpen arm and it also gives us another prospect for the future so that's a good trade for us i think i'll kind of want to make one more move for a player whose contract is expiring so i'll see you guys in a sec all right next trade we're gonna be making is craig stammon who i didn't know we we're gonna be paying a million next year as well kirby yates and a catcher who we won't be using in Luis Torrens for Eliezer Hernandez of the Marlins. 69 overall, 22 years old, B potential, relief pitcher. I think he's he should help us out, not this season, but definitely next season. Um, and I'm, I'm cool with that. It's another trade that it's a small contract and it's a young player who's going to help us out for the future. So I think that's it for the trade deadline day. Um, really the big there's not much that changes because of it um that's why he can't play that position can Perella play short he can't so um i'll switch up the lineup and make sure everything is good no real changes to the lineup galvis is gone the bullpen is probably going to remain the same as well as the starting rotation so i'll see you guys at the end of the season as you can see 62 and 100 was our finished season and to be honest I mean, it was a little bit better than what I was expecting. I honestly didn't think we were going to win that many games. I was expecting maybe 50, 40 wins. Um, we finished 34 games out of the West, out of the wild card spot, 25 games. So not the best of seasons. Eliezer Hernandez actually won rookie of the year and Hedges and Hosmer won gold gloves. Not a horrible season. Um, it was a lot better than I like I said it was a lot better than I expected Danielson Lamette is up to an 81 overall 25 years old he looks he looks to be decent ERA is a little high but you know what he should continue to develop and do well um, Joey Lucchese 76 overall not too bad 389 ERA still you know he's still young developing Luis Perdomo 74 a um, little bit high on the walks but okay Jordan Lyles I'm not too worried about Eric Lauer, Lauer um, 70 overall I mean not a horrible year he had one of our he actually had the lowest ERA out of everybody Robbie Erlin 73 okay he's 27 3.79 ERA okay okay not a horrible horrible season the rookie of the year Hernandez 68 overall I mean his ERA went, went up once he joined us for sure but um overall a pretty solid season matt strom's up to a 73 um again era is pretty high but like i said i'm expecting high era numbers from our pitchers joe biagini 77 still um a pretty solid year and carter caps i put him in the closer role and turns out maybe this is a spot for him maybe this is where he belongs he's developing quite nicely and he looks to be kind of fitting that fitting that spot there um, looking at the lineup, Manuel Margot is up to an 81, um, but still a little disappointing in the on-base percentage. Jose Perilla once moved to shortstop, finished with 281 and 328 on-base percentage, down to an 81. Um, I'm not too sure I'll bring him back. Um, Eric Hosmer did a little bit better, potential still down, um, but I wish he would do a little bit better for a $10 million a year player. Will Myers is hitting two, hit 253 on the year. A lot better home run stats. Um, 20 more RBIs. Not too bad. Christian Villanueva, he's continuing to develop, which is good to see. Franchi Cordero, same thing. 74 overall, about 250 on the year, 300 on base percentage, 14 homers. Not too shabby. Carlos Asuaje looks to be a decent little platoon player for us. Almost 300 average on the year. Pretty good, pretty good stats. Austin Hedges, 78, the gold glover. Um, 229, though, not the best. And then um, on the bench, Spangenberg, he hit about 200. Solid. Francisco Mejia is up to his 78. He hit two, 280 on the year. So maybe it's time for him to step in. And Hunter Renfro, he bumped up his average about 10 points since All-Star break. 
and um, had an okay season, but nothing too spectacular. Looking at the starting pitchers, Car uh, Carl, Chris Paddock, 71 overall, already one of our better pitchers. He probably will hit the majors next year. Adrian Mo Morejon, um, 70 overall. He could he could help us out season three if he continues to develop like this. Mackenzie Gore, 69 overall. Nice. Um, he's got a potential by season three. He probably will help us out as well. Um, Cal Quantrill, same thing. If he continues to develop season three name. Michael Baez, 66 overall. So we're looking good there. Um, like I said, bullpen, not that strong. And then William Contreras, the player we traded for, he's up to a 66 already. So maybe Austin Hedges by season three won't be hanging around the club too much. Um, Alan Cordoba's already a 70. His potential's gone down, but um, he looks to be, you know, the new second base backup because I'll probably let Spangenberg go since Spangenberg had such a poor season. Luis Urias is up to a 69 already, but his potential's gone down. I don't like to see that. That's not good. And then Biggio's a 68. You can see he's developing too. Um, who else here? Who else? Tatis Jr. 66. So he probably won't be ready until season three. Um, Xavier Edwards, he's a 62 at 18 years old is a pretty good rating. Um, Travis Jankowski's 29 or not 29, 69, 26 year old. Not that's not bad. That's not bad at all. I'll probably keep him around. He's a cheap, nice little player to have. Drew Waters, 63 overall. We traded for him from the Braves. Um, Buddy Reed as another player, 22 years old, 68 overall. And then looking over here, Sulis Matias, his potential has gone down a little bit, but he is up to a 66. So that's not too bad to see. So overall, everybody's developing which is what i want to see some potentials are starting to go down not what i want to see but hopefully in the second season it will get a little bit better my plans um for the off season basically sign any young players that we're gonna lose bring them back maybe sign one big piece this off season if not maybe just try to strengthen the bullpen with the available free agents and then just go from there i think um We'll probably just need to sign some players to fill gaps for now and then really just let the youth develop again in season two. And then season three is when everybody should be ready to hit the majors and we can see how this young team performs. You guys can see the playoff bracket here. Um, let's just sim to the end of the season, see how it goes, who wins the World Series. The Astros defeated the Rockies. Okay. Arbitration. Let's just quickly go through it. Austin Hedges. I will definitely offer some. Um, we'll, we'll go about there just because he didn't hit too well. He doesn't really deserve that big of a um, pay increase. I'll put Carter Caps up to two. Uh, Be a genie. I'll put him up as well. He he definitely deserves a pay increase with the way he performed this season. Um, Erlin. Oh, almost gave him an offer. Erlin deserves. Probably about the same, actually, if not less. Spangenberg can go and Craig can go. So that those are the four we're going to be going for right there. Contracts now. Let me do this off camera and I'll show you guys what I do. Alrighty, so the big ones are Margot, 12 million over three years. Mejia, 2.3 million, two years. Renfro, 5.5 for three. Villanueva, 15 for four. Lucchese, 1 million for two. Cordero, 1 million for two. Aswahe nine for five, Perdomo six and a half for four, and then the rest, oh, Strom eight for four. The rest were all like um, young player contracts, so they're on the minor league ones. Alrighty, I found this guy in free agency, first baseman, 21 years old, a potential, decent power already. We're gonna sign him up to a minor league contract, so. It always helps to see if you can find some youngsters with good potential and free agency. All right, to start season two, this is how we're looking. Um, bullpen's looking a little bit stronger. Um, not amazing, but definitely a little bit stronger. We have this guy we drafted last year, Miguel Escobar, who looks to be a decent little closer already. Um, we definitely need a new starting pitcher. This is how we're looking for the season. Our bench is a little bit weaker. Um, we definitely need a new infielder to step up. And then... Um, Overall, I mean, it's not a bad lineup. I mean, when you look at it, we don't, I don't want to bring up Urias just yet. And you can see we don't really have anybody to kind of play that platoon role on the infield. So maybe um, we can find somebody to do that for now in the trades. Maybe just a low rated second baseman or shortstop. But for, especially since 
Biggio's not ready. Urias is not ready. Tatis Jr. is not ready. They will be next year, but just right now they're not. So let me see if I can find that kind of like backup second baseman um, to kind of fill that role right now. Alrighty, not necessarily the smartest idea, but I'm going to bring in 36-year-old Ian Kinsler for this season. I know he's going to drop very, very quickly in rating, um, but we just need that platoon bat, and that's was the easiest way to do it already to line up the second season this is how we're looking um like i said we did bring in ian kinsler the rotation is currently looking like this it's not a horrible team it's looking better than last year um but it is again a very young team so like i usually do i'm gonna let the cpu handle the draft in season two and we're gonna go straight to the deadline day at the deadline day in season two we're sitting at 49 and 60 21 games out um, in the wild card, we're, we're still, you know, we're 12 games out, but um, we're doing, oh, we're doing okay. Um, looking at the CPU drafted a 99 potential player, Michael Dube, Doobie, we'll call him Doobie. Okay, CPU, I see you. Johnny Clevenger is not a bad little prospect either, and neither is Mel Lovino, but overall, not not amazing let's see how the rotation is looking lamette is still around that 81 mark not really going up too much more which is a little disappointing to see joey's going up which is good to see he's got a 3.28 era lauer 74 overall okay perdomo's a 78 he's sitting at, is he is yikes his era is pretty high but he's still developing and chris paddock is up to a 74 which is great to see he's actually having a pretty solid first season in the bigs um erlin is a 73 or no, 74 overall his his ratings are okay his stats are okay hernandez is a monster almost 100 in innings pitched and under a three era this guy's crazy strom 74 his potential starting to go down um be a genie's having not a bad year but his potential's gone down arajo eh um, Hildenberger's up to an 82, which is good to see. Carter Caps seems to kind of leveled off in the setup role. And Miguel Escobar is continue is actually looking pretty solid. Um, this is his first year, four blown saves. Not too bad, 29 saves overall. I might do that just so Hildenberger kind of has that setup role. Maybe stabilize it a little bit better. Margot's up to an 83 overall. His potential has gone down to a B though, but he's hitting better, which is good to see. And his on-base percentage has gone up. Ian Kinsler, I said, would start going down. But he's only on a one-year deal. And to be honest, not too bad. Aswahe did get hurt in the middle of the season. But you can see in his time that he's played, he's doing pretty solid. Um, Renfro is still about that 74 mark. But he's hitting better. Um, his average is up as well. Hosmer's up to a 91, which is good to see. This is the type of numbers i want to see from him 338 average 418 on base percentage that's what i want to see from him will myers is an 85 272 average that's really good to see villanueva's almost up to an 80 overall his average is down which is not not good to see frenchy cordero yikes frenchy cordero you need to do something with that batting mejia's up to an 81 having a little bit of a slump there austin hedges is a 79 he's doing better than last year so it kind of seems like mejia and hedges swapped hitting ability and alan cordoba is um hitting 230 on the year not too bad Alrighty, this trade could end up hurting us in the future because his rating is going down but he is only 26 so i don't see why it would continue in a downward trend but we're going for jose ramirez 89 overall um, with that being said, we are getting rid of Bartolo Rosado, um, the catcher Austin Hedges, and then a player that I really wasn't looking to move, but we're getting rid of Christian Villanueva. Um, I had him in the Cardinals rebuild, so I feel like we should probably get someone new, and why not get Jose Ramirez, 89 overall. He looks to be a pretty good pickup. Um, I think this will help us. Another player I did look at was Miguel Sano who again he's also going down in rating um he's a year younger but um it's a pretty similar trade Ooh, i kind of want miguel sado now because he adds power and i feel like this team kind of lacks a little bit of power so 
do i go with this instead let me know in the comment section below what you guys would do would you go miguel sano or would you go jose ramirez um you know what let's go let's let's go with that let's go with this yeah let's go with this i feel like and we can get a nice little reliever and paco rodriguez i'm cool with this trade with the twins so yeah we're gonna switch it up last second miguel sano paco rodriguez for hedges villanueva and rosado rosado um I, I like that i like that a lot that uh that helps us out um that means i can move elvis arajo down um which means we don't have to worry about that anymore and then now our pitching rotation looks like this i mean it looks a little bit better um the pit the starters all look the same we got these guys in the bullpen we now have Miguel Sano at third, and then our DH will just be like Hunter Renfro. Um, I like that. I like that move. I think that really helps us out for the future. Um, I like that. I think, yeah, that was a good move. Um, hopefully, Sano continues to grow and not decrease um, like it says he is. But um, we'll see. We'll see. I think this this might help us for the you know for for now. Let's uh, see how the rest of the season goes, and I'll catch you guys at the end of the season. Alrighty, so we won nine more games as last from last year, because last year we were, what, 60 and 100? Which doesn't make sense. But, I guess, or maybe we won seven, I don't, I don't know. But we did have a better record now than we did last season, which is good to see. So I'll show you the playoff picture now. Um, we did progress from season one to season two. And then let's just see how everything did. You can see Joey is now our best starter. Um, Lamette got hurt towards the end of the year. That's probably why he decreased a little bit. But Joey, 81 overall. Solid ERA. Um, wins and losses aren't going to be there because obviously we, we didn't win that many games. But you can see his runs and earned runs went uh, went down, which is good. Perdomo is a 76. And his walks went down a lot, which is good to see. Um, but overall, he, he did allow a lot more runs, which isn't good. So maybe starting pitcher is a spot we do need to look into. 20, Almost 20 more walks on the year for Lamette. And he got hurt, but his runs did go down. Um, Paddock is a 74. His potential's gone down. And that's kind of why I didn't want to bring him up just yet. Because I wanted to let him develop a little bit more. But that's okay. Um, Lauer's a 74. He's, he's not having a bad season. Hernandez is a 71, a little bit better of a year than last year. Actually, runs wise, like allowing runs, it went better, but walks and strikeouts went down. Erlin had a little bit of a rough year. Strom, a little bit better. Um, Biagini, similar numbers. Paco Rodriguez. Not bad. I mean, I will, I'll take it. Carter Caps. He's looking like he's kind of stalled out. Not that great of a year. Hildenberger, though, 86 overall. I like to see that. And you can see Miguel Escobar is still at 78. 35 saves on the year. Seven blown. But um, this was his rookie season, so I can't really complain there. Margot is up to an 84 overall. You can see his average and on-base percentage went up. Same with his production levels. Kinsler, don't even care about because he was just kind of a filler Hosmer is an 89. These are the numbers I want to see. You know, 84 ribbies, 313 average, 402 on base percentage. Will Myers hit 271, which is better than last year. Not as many home runs or ribbies, but still pretty decent stats. Miguel Sano looks like he's not decreasing anymore, which is good to see. Um, Franchi Cordero is up to a 78. His potentials decreased a little bit, um, probably because his average was pretty low. Mejia's up to an 82. Okay. Okay. Um, Renfro 73s kind of stayed the same. And Cordoba's a 76. Okay. Buddy Reed and Asuaje. Asuaje just continues to get a little bit better, which is good to see. So let's look at the minors. Gore's up to a 74. So he might be up next season. Diaz is a 72. Quantrill, um, 72. Morejon, Baez. So pitching wise, we're still looking decent on the young front. Contreras, 69 overall. So he'll be ready for next season. Um, Biggio is a 72. Urias is a 71. Um, Tatis Jr. is a 68. 
um jankowski finally hit that 70 mark waters is a 66 and that's that's what oh matias is a 67 so we still got some nice little prospects developing um let's see where we finished on the season 31 games out yikes yikes um in the wild card 19 so that's the playoff picture like i showed you guys that's how the team was looking overall like i said season two i really wasn't expecting much either season one was pretty rough season two not much better arbitration was given to all five of those players contracts are mostly going to be the young guys so i don't really need to show you any of these contracts they're mostly going to be um rookie contracts as you can see the one contract i wanted to offer was for a new starting pitcher we're going for michael Walker, four years 58.9 million um that's really going to be the only business that we can do start season three we're making a pretty big trade acquiring javi Baez from the cubs 87 overall 27 years old a potential for buddy reed um and two of our better pitchers in eric lauer and michael baez a top 50 prospect a player who actually has been pitching pretty well for us but he's not really cracking the top five anymore and we're bringing in a new second baseman so with that this is how we're going to line up in the rotation bullpens left untouched from last season michael Walker is the newest addition in the starting rotation and then we have adrian morejon picking up that fifth spot so right now i think we're looking okay um with the new addition of javi baez he will start over tatis jr he'll play shortstop um do it this way i'll just slide him in real slide him into the the lineup real quick all right, no DH. I want him higher up in the lineup for sure. But you can see this is the lineup. Um, with the addition of Baez, now we can let Tatis kind of work the bench a little bit. Cordoba on the bench as well. This is looking like a lot better team. Um, I mean, look at look at where we're at. Everybody's almost in the 80s besides Asuaje and Cordero. Um, and I think, I think we're looking really good. Um, I like what the team is looking like. I'm feeling really confident about where we are you know it's just it just looks like a lot better team than it did last season like and that's that's just where i wanted to be i feel like we're it's it's a really good team that we've put together so let's see how we are at the trade deadline day Alrighty, so at the deadline day of season three you can see we're 11 games out of the west our biggest chance of making any playoffs would really be the wild card we're four games out which isn't horrible Looking at the draft picks the CPU did, 94 potential for Kenny Burnside, so we'll sign him up. David Bay, you know, he can get signed up, and then that, that's really about it. So looking at the rotation, you can see Michael Walker's up to a 90. He's having an unreal season. Wins and losses aren't there, but a 2.84 ERA, that's top notch. Lamette is an 81. His ERA is pretty high. Lucchese about the same as last year he's doing okay perdomo's up to a 78 and then mackenzie gore i brought him up since morejon was doing pretty poorly and you can see him there erlin's doing okay his potential starting to decrease but he's not having a horrible season um hernandez is doing decent his era is a little high but um you know once again our record isn't fantastic so i can't really expect much be up to an 80 he's having a pretty pretty solid season like really solid strom is going down so maybe it's time to move on from him paco rodriguez his potential is going down but he's having a pretty decent season as well hildenberger's having a pretty rough one um he's starting to decrease and miguel escobar is actually increasing in rating so um it's the era is kind of high but he's still increasing in rating so i like to see that manuel margot's up to an 85 um pretty similar stats from last year um his hits are a little bit higher and you can see his on base percentage and average is about the same as 76 273 or 272 average not too bad hosmer's hovering around that 90 mark you know high 80s um he's still performing pretty well miguel sano's going down hmm hmm will myers is hitting 287 though which i like to see javi baez is 86 He's hitting 277 on the year. Franchi Cordero's a 79. 
and then Mejia's an 84. He's been hurt for about half the season so far, but he's playing pretty well. And you got Cordoba, who's hitting 211. Tatis Jr. is up to a 70, which I like to see. Renfro's up to a 78. And then William Contreras is a 67. Let's quickly look at some of the other players. See if we have anybody who could um, be brought up to help us out for the second half of the season. Um, Urias is is about ready. Like, I think he, he's about ready. Um, Biggio, his potential has actually gone down. That's not good to see. Um, who else possibly could be brought up? Jankowski's not too far off. Drew Waters is injured, which is a little disappointing to see. Um, Matias is up to a 69, so maybe we need to move some of these pieces to kind of strengthen. I think the pitching is where we need to strengthen um, and see if we can find somebody at this deadline day to maybe push us into that wild card spot. Already at the deadline, we're bringing in Harlan Garcia from the Marlins. Um, 27 years old, B potential. He's 87 overall. Um, his stats don't look amazing, but um, he's having a really good year. And I definitely think he'll help us in the starting rotation. We're gonna get, we're going to be getting rid of Jacob Heatherly, Heatherly, um, Fran Mill Reyes, and also the big piece is Cal Quantrill, who could potentially help us next season. But at the same time, I feel like we need someone to help us right now. And now we have, you know, another high-rated pitcher. Next trade we're going to be making with is the Cubs for Carl Edwards Jr. Relief pitcher, 84 overall, B potential. We're getting rid of Kevin Biggio as well as Jacob Nix, a starting pitcher. We're getting rid of some of these um, starting pitching prospects to strengthen our team for the now. And we're getting a bullpen arm, which I feel like we kind of do need. All right, we're going to be adding another reliever. Um, and this was kind of my thought was um, we're getting rid of Strom who's decreasing in rating and then this um allows us to bring up luis urias who's already higher than cordoba and cordoba is not really that good of a hitter so i felt like let's get rid of him let's bring up urias let him develop and then um get rid of cordoba strom and then the center fielder michael geddes for drew hutchison and then a starting pitcher in thomas lewis who doesn't look that bad actually for a 74 overall player so that's going to be, I think, the last trade we make. So let me move the, the roster around and I'll show you what we're going to be going with for the rest of the season. This is how we're lining up in the rotation and bullpen. Waka, Garcia, Lamette, Lucchese, and Perdomo. We got Erlin, Hernandez, Biagini, Hutchinson, Rodriguez, Hildenberger, Edwards Jr., and Escobar. In the lineup, you guys can see how it is. Um, Margot, Tatis Jr., Hosmer, Sano, Myers, Baez. Cordero Mejia and then the pitcher spot on the bench we got Luis Urias, Asuaje, Renfro and Contreras. Um I'm liking what I'm seeing. I really do. I think I think we're set for the rest of the year. As you can see we finished 80 and 82 which I mean that's our best record. We're getting closer and closer to that 500 mark. This is the playoff picture. Let's go see 12 out in the West and then in the wild card, seven games out in the wild card, so a little bit worse off the second half. Um, but you know what? I'm I'm liking what I'm seeing with the squad. You can see that all of our starters are 80s now. Waka, even though he didn't have a winning record, he did a lot better in the second half. A three ERA, which is great to see. Garcia, um, 86. He finished 11 11. His ERA is amazing. Um, Lucchese looks to be really good i mean like everyone's developing his runs went up a little bit but nothing too crazy lamette i mean his earned runs went went down but overall the last two pitchers i can see it being a little bit of a problem perdomo did a little bit better with the runs erlin is up to a 78 which is good to see hernandez 72 still um his era is kind of high there Biagini is still around that 80 mark, that high 70s mark. His ERA was phenomenal this season. His strikeouts a lot higher and was able to keep the walks pretty low. Hutchinson's an 83, so he looks to be a decent little pickup for us. Paco Hernandez still around that mid 70s mark, but his ERA was phenomenal in the 70 innings he pitched. Hildenberger still around that high 70s mark, had a pretty good year. Edwards Jr. still 84 overall, really good ERA. And then Escobar is an 83. So that's 
amazing to see. He's really going up. 34 saves this season, eight blown saves, and his ERA was pretty high, but he's getting better. He's definitely getting better. As you can see for the squad, Manuel Margot, still around that 84 mark. Um, average isn't that good, but his on-base percentage is still about the same from last year. Will Myers is an 84. Hit a little bit better last um, than last year, but his numbers were down, which is a little disappointing to see. Eric Hosmer, still around that high 80s mark. More homers, more ribbies. Um, average was still pretty good, which is good to see. Snow, 88 overall. Pretty similar stats from last year. Cordero's up to an 83. Okay, okay. And then Mejia's an 87. Oh, okay. I mean, he's going up. Um, not amazing hitting stats, but definitely a decent fielder. Baez is an 86. 266 average, about the same as last year. Yeah, similar numbers than last year. A little bit more power um, with home runs. Urias, 72 overall. Hit about 230 in his debut season. Tatis Jr. hit 218. Um, Asuaje hit 279, 230 for Renfro, and 195 for Contreras. So, um, an okay season. Definitely a lot better. We're getting there. I'm going to sim the postseason, and we're just going to sim straight through to see how this team does in season four, and hopefully, hopefully we make the playoffs. Alrighty, so we brought everybody back. The exact same lineup. Except for Perdomo isn't the best fifth starter. So Morejon is going to get another shot in the bigs. If he doesn't do well, I'm probably going to let Perdomo take over. I might even still let Perdomo take over just because his um his stats are a little bit better in the per nines. And then we got Joey Lucchese, Lamette, Harlan Garcia, and Waka. I could, use, I could, ooh, I could also trade Lamette just because his... His ERA is usually pretty high. So you know what? You know what? I'll leave it like this. Um, we got Erlin, Hutchinson, Biagini, Paco Rodriguez, Hildenberger, Edwards Jr., and Escobar. So everyone looks really good. I mean, you guys can see the lineup here. Tatis Jr. is a 75. Urias is a 74. Renfro is almost an 80. Contreras is a 73. Our team's looking good. I feel like this is... This is where we needed to be. I feel like we're at a really good spot um, with the squad now. Like I feel like we're we're looking really really good. So let's see how we are. Um, I'm just gonna sim at the half. Mm, I might just sim to the end of the season. I'll show you guys where we're at. We barely. I, I'm gonna call it. We barely made the postseason as a wild card team. We're taking on the Mets. We went 87 and 75. But let's let's talk about this for a second because. Um, looking at the standings, we were eight games out in the West. And if you look at where we have the, the Dodgers, we have the Rockies, you know, how many times we probably lost to the Dodgers this season and the Rockies. If we played in any other division, I guarantee you, we would have made the playoffs at least two of the years. The rotation, there was one change I made was that Lamette was just getting rocked like you can see 617 era and that's why i decided to try to move them out of the starting rotation because everybody else you can see has a decent era perdomo is just a really good pitcher um morejon he's up to an 87 he went 11 and 6 this year lucasi 88 10 and 12 this year but he has a 356 era harlan garcia 88 his era is high but he had a winning record. He did well. Waka, he's still doing great. 2.89 ERA. Erlin, 83. Um, Hutchinson, 83. He's got a 3.51 ERA. Not too bad. Biagini's still going up, so he looks to be like a really good pickup that we made with the um, Blue Jays. 2.25 ERA. That's amazing. Hildenberger, 86. That's insane. Um, Edwards, 84 not as good of a year and then escobar that closer that we drafted the first season 42 saves this year and he's a 90 overall when you look at some of the players that we have in the farm system we got um gore who's an 81 we got weathers who's a 78 espinoza muller um we got this guy michael dube um who's got a potential and then we got in the bullpen for relief we still have hernandez who he finished 
pretty poorly this season. Um, Thomas Lewis was a starter. I converted him to a relief pitcher. He did okay. Um, and then everybody else down there. So we have really good players for the future in this team. You can see, I didn't even show you guys the lineup. Um, Renfro got hurt for like all the second half of the year, but Will Myers, 290. That's his best season so far. He's up to an 86 overall. You can see his stats there. Renfro, he got hurt, so I'm not too worried about it. Hosmer still in the 90 club. He hit 300 this year. Amazing stats. Um, Sano, 89 overall. It's going down a little bit, but he hit 300, 33 homers. Baez, 87 overall. He's going down a little bit, but um, he had he had a, a bit of an off season. Franchi Cordero. 262 on the year he's up to an 85 Manuel Margot 88 overall so this team Mejia 89 unreal Tatis Jr. finally hits an 80 his potentials at a um a he's got 300 average Urias is a 75 you can see he's developing Asuaje still been one of those platoon players that has been really really good and Contreras is a 74 so he was a really good pickup from the Braves um for a backup catcher so overall this team has been really really good and i think that if we were in any other division we would have made the playoffs a lot more than just once in four years this team is just too good not to make it um i think i would have traded in hindsight lamette a lot sooner he has a lot of good trade um value and to get a pitcher who would have won a lot more games for us and wouldn't have such high eras over those seasons I think would have helped us out a lot more. I think we lost a lot of games with Lamette that um, we could have avoided. But let's just let's just hop into this playoff game against the Mets. Whatever happens, happens. Let's see how it is. I think we created a very, very, very good team, and I don't. I think this is one of the better teams that we actually did create in terms of it being set for the future. I mean, we do have like we just have a really solid team, of course. Of course, Waka gets hurt. What are the odds of that? I guess we're going with Harlan Garcia. You can see this is the lineup we're going with. Top lineup there. Um, the New York Mets have Merrifield, Luplo, Nimmo, Cespedes, Alonzo, Flores, Caratini, Rosario, and Syndergaard on the mound. A double to start the game. Back-to-back -back doubles. Luckily, he was thrown out at home. They do score though, so it doesn't really matter in the end. Margot gets us off on the right foot. Baez strikes out. Hosmer singles, so first and second, one out. You gotta be kidding me. What? That's three straight innings they've gotten their leadoff runner on. There we go, Margot, with a little solo shot there. Looks like Syndergaard got hurt in the third. Garcia gets his first one, two, three inning. We got a runner on first. Strikes out, flies out, a single. Okay, maybe a little two out rally here. We take the lead at two to one. And you can see that's that's good. That's what I like to see. We get out of the fifth there. And you know what? Harlan Garcia is a little low on um, stamina already. So we're going to take him out here. He pitched five solid innings. Look at that little pinch hit home run. We're up three to one. Single for Baez and then a double play to end the inning, but that's okay. That's okay. Um, we got a lefty and then a couple righties. So you, we're just going to bring in Hutchinson. That's okay. We're still up one run. So as long as double play. Okay. Okay. I'll take that. Mejia singles. Tatis Jr. Doubles home the run. We're back up by two. We're going to pinch hit here. We're facing a righty. Um, we'll let Urias swing the bat. He strikes out. Margot strikes out, and Baez grounds out. But that's okay. We're heading into the eighth. We're bringing in Edwards Jr. to kind of, you know, hold the spot there. Hosmer. Okay, little little insurance run, maybe, maybe. No, but that's okay. We look to, you know, we're bringing in that that closer we drafted in the first season, and gets us out of it and we're taking on the Dodgers so the team that has been giving us the most trouble throughout the season we're gonna be taking them on in the playoffs Garcia versus oh whoa 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 I gotta move the rotation around because Garcia just pitched so hopefully let's hope that 
Waka's ready by the time that game comes because otherwise we're in a little bit of trouble. So Perdomo Kershaw, that was not a good way to start. I think that said 10 to 1. Game 2, 9 to 2. Okay, I might let Waka take over here and we'll go like that. That way we can get a good arm in Walker Bueller versus Michael Waka. We do take the loss there, so if we lose this, it's season over. And I mean, again, it's the Dodgers. The Dodgers were our killers. And um, overall, like I said, guys, I think this team is, this is probably the best team we've actually ever assembled in terms of rating, um, in terms of youth. You got Will Myers, who's 30, okay. Hunter Renfro, okay, 29. Hosmer, Hosmer would probably be a piece I'd move next season. Um, because he's getting into the higher um, age. So no, still high 80s. Baez, he's, you know, high 80s. Cordero's only 26. Baez is 28. Sano's 27. Margot's 26. Mejia's 25. Tatis Jr.'s 22. Urias is 23. Asuaje's 29. And Contreras is 23. So we have a good core. Um, I would say from Sano down would be players I'd want to keep. You know, Sano, Baez. Tatis Jr., Cordero, Margot, Mejia. Then we got Urias and Contreras there. Um, the pitching rotation is still solid. Garcia's only 28. Perdomo's 27. Lu Lucchese, Lucchese's 27. Waka's 29. Morejon's 22. And then we got Lamette, who would be traded for next season if I were to continue this. I think the bullpen is very, very solid. Um, we got a couple players in their 30s. I know Erlin's there. Um, Hutchinson's in his 30s. Biagini's in his 30s. Hildenberger. Um, Edwards Jr. is almost there. But we still have a solid bullpen. And then, like I said, in the farm system, we got Gore. We have Paddock. Uh, Diaz is actually decent, even though he has C potential. Espinoza, Mueller, Patino. Um, Doobie, Doob, however you want to say his name. We got Hernandez. We got Lewis down here. Um, also, we got Castillo there. Kenny Burnside, I think, was drafted last season or the season before by the CPU. Um, we got Josh Naylor, who's up to a 70 almost. Alexi Cabrera, who we picked up in the first season of free agency. He's an A potential player. Um, Hudson Potts is a 70 almost. Xavier Edwards is finally a 71, and his stats look very well-rounded already. Jankowski is almost an 80. I didn't even notice that. He's been in the farm system. Um, Drew Waters is finally a 71. And then um, we got Thomas Cope, who's a 71. We have that player that we traded from the um, Royals, who's a 71. So we still have a lot of good pieces in the farm system. We got a really good core with Baez, Urias, Tatis Jr., Sano, um, Mejia, I think this team, I know I say this every time, this is the team I think we've really set up to be good for the future. This is a team I really enjoyed making, um, and I hope you guys enjoyed it too. This time I tried to avoid as many jump cuts so that you guys can see how everything went. When I sim through the season, there's obviously going to be jump cuts and when I do trades just because... I don't want you guys to see me just sit there and try to think about what trades I'm trying to make. Um, but the playoffs, I just went straight through it so you guys don't have any issues about me thinking I'm, you know, I'm Tom Brady or anything. I'm trying to cheat. So I hope you guys enjoyed this, um, this uh, rebuild. I think, like I said, if we were in any other division, I really think this team would have won um, a World Series. I really do. Um, I think the Dodgers are just, they're too good of a team to play consistently throughout the season in a division and it, it hurts us you know like I said and we also had the Rockies we also had the Diamondbacks so I think we're good for a season and then the Giants as well who I think we're good for a season so we, we were in a very tough division um, so I hope you guys enjoyed this rebuild if you did hit that like button down below subscribe if you're new and enjoyed the content I'll catch you on the next video peace